All right, so today is another episode of Running With Wolves. Welcome back, you guys. Today we are gonna talk all about the marketing things you need to stop doing literally right now. This used to be a TikTok series of mine that I absolutely loved, and you guys loved it too. So we're gonna break down kind of my top icks, if you will, when it comes to marketing and how you can overcome them to create better sales, faster sales, more sales in a more effortless way. So let's dive in. Number one, my biggest ick when it comes to marketing nowadays is over-educating, which is gonna be a very controversial opinion because there are so many people in this space who talk about you need to provide value, you need to over-educate, you need to showcase your knowledge and your expertise in your industry and position yourself as an authority. I actually think that over-educating creates an audience of consumers rather than buyers. So when it comes to over-educating, people constantly come to me talking to me about how they're seeing a ton of engagement in their accounts. They have a ton of followers. They don't have any issues getting people watching their videos. They don't have any issues with people commenting back, but no one's buying from them. And I can literally take one look at their profile and be like, okay, you're over-educating. That's exactly why, because Think about the last time you bought a product or you invested in a service. Why did you do that? It wasn't because that brand or that business educated you on that product or that service. It's because they activated you based off of what is meaningful to you and got you to buy from them. Something interestingly enough that I compare this to is like, Remember the old YouTube makeup tutorial days? You know, we're talking Jaclyn Hill, Desi Perkins, all the classics, right? They were creating content for us they weren't just educating us on the makeup. And you, I don't know about you guys, but I literally bought anything that they were talking about. They were like, oh, I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills palette or whatever. I'm like immediately add to cart, right? But the reason that we did that was not because they were educating us. It's because of how they talked about the product that they were using. So when they were doing these makeup tutorials, right? They're they're showing you how they're creating this look, but the product itself that they're talking about, they're not sitting there being like, oh my gosh, you should buy this eyeshadow because look at the color or whatever, or because it creates a really good smoky eye. They're talking about, you should buy this eyeshadow because it's so creamy, it's so blendable, it's so pigmented, it's perfect for you know, a beginner makeup artist or any of those things. This is what you really need if you wanna create this look. And they were talking about that eyeshadow based off of what's important to you in an eyeshadow, and that's why you went and bought it. And also because you're seeing it in action, right? Or for example, no one invests in our services, marketing service services, because we tell them how to market for themselves. I provide so much value on TikTok but the goal of that content is not to get people to buy from us, it's to get them engaged in binging our content. So if I'm telling you, hey, here's the top three things you need to know and take into consideration when you're creating sales with your content, no one is then going and investing in our services because I told them how to do that. They're investing in our services because we show them that they need our services and that they have a problem that they can't fix without our services, right? The key to creating really effortless sales is not over-educating. It's activating people to buy stuff of what's important to them. We've talked about the four different buyer types in a previous episode, stuff of their different buyer types. It's also about really positioning your product or service as the unique solution to their problems or their desires. If you can get people to really see the gap that they're experiencing without your product or service, and then plug your product or service as that unique solution, the sales become so effortless. But if you're over-educating people, all they're gonna do is come back to consume your free content over and over again and not actually buy from you. So in terms of marketing mistakes that you need to stop doing literally right now, you're like shooting yourself in the foot when it comes to creating sales through your content because all you're planning to do is over-provide value, right? So number two, stop trying to go viral. The goal of creating content, the goal of Creating sales is not to go viral. I see so many people over and over and over again. They're like, Savannah, my video popped off. I went viral. I got 500,000 views, but no one bought for me. And I'm like, yeah, that's because going viral is not an actual marketing or sales strategy when people think that's the be all end all, right? I hear so many companies that are like, if we could just have a video go viral, then all of our problems would be solved. You know, all of our sales issues would be solved. 
But the reality is that going viral, I compare almost to paid ads, right? You have to pay for one you don't, one is organic, but the goal of both of those is just to get you in front of as many eyes as possible. You're not actually going to convert those eyes into sales just by going viral. You have to couple it with a bunch of different types of content that engage your audience and build trust with them and position you as an authority and then convert them and sell to them based off of what's important to them like we were just talking about. A sales conversation with somebody last week who had 80,000 Instagram followers. And on top of that, she had a ton of people following her on TikTok, all of her videos constantly went viral and she could only get two people to buy her latest digital product that she was selling. Out of hundreds of thousands of people that were following her and seeing her videos, and I'm not joking you guys, when I looked at her page, I could identify two to three issues as to why she wasn't seeing sales. And that's because the primary goal and focus was to go viral with her content. It wasn't to create sales. If you have the goal to create sales and you reverse engineer that into a marketing strategy based off of your framework, let's say for example, you use the Wolf framework, which is attract, warm, convert. If you start with that conversion piece in mind and you work backwards, you recognize, yes, I need to have visibility. I need to predictably be getting more people into my audience every single day in order to sell to them, but I also have to warm them and nurture them and engage them, and then I have to sell to them. So if your goal is to create sales, you're not just gonna go viral. You'll realize that actually even the videos that don't perform as well are the ones that are actually going to be creating sales for you. And remember also, in this is kind of in that same vein, the size of your audience literally does not matter. I met so many people, or I have met so many people along the way in the past couple of years that have massive TikTok audiences, Instagram audiences, and no one is buying from them. And it's truly because they do not know how to use their content to sell their products or their services. And so, like I said, things that you need to stop doing literally right now in terms of marketing, if your goal is to create sales rather than just to get a lot of views, which that's why we're all right, marketing our products and our services, marketing our businesses and brands is to create sales. If that is your goal, you can't just focus on going viral. You have to focus on creating conversions from that virality and virality plays a part in that for sure but stop just trying to go viral number three of things that you need to stop doing literally right now is copying your competitors marketing strategy and then getting pissed that you're not seeing sales it is hilarious to me how many people i see whether it's on the service or the product-based side of things, whether you're B2B or B2C, I see so many people over and over again where I'm like, okay, what does your marketing strategy look like? And they're like, well, so-and-so, who's my top competitor is doing this. So I've also been doing that, but I'm not seeing sales and I really don't know why because it works for them. So why wouldn't it work for me? The reality is that so many different things go into making up a marketing strategy. For example, we have a very specific reason as to why we market the way that we do. It's based on who our audience is, what we know gets their attention, converts them, what performs best for us, creates the most sales, what potential objections or questions they have. It's based on so many different things. And so if somebody who was another marketer in the same industry as us tried to copy our strategy, but they have different buyer types in their audience who have different objections, different questions, different things convert them, different things get their attention, right? Our marketing strategy that is formulated perfectly to our business, our target audience, our industry is not going to work for them. And yet they are essentially trying to like hack the framework or hack the strategy or any of those things and implement it for themselves, but they don't understand the intent behind the strategy. And if you don't understand the intent behind the strategy or how to customize that strategy, you're not going to see sales because it's not going to really hit home for your target audience. It's going to go right over their head and they're going to move on to your other competitor who knows how to market to them effectively. A lot of times I have almost talked about this as like, when you were back in high school and you were taking a test and I never cheated on a test, but I knew a lot of like our football players that would, they'd look at another person's test and they'd cheat on their test and that person didn't know the answers. So they're cheating off a t of a test where somebody else is going to get a bad grade and they get a bad grade on their homework or on their test. And they're like, why the hell did I get a bad grade? I cheated. I should have known the answers. It's like, no, the person that you cheated off of 
is the one that didn't know the answers in the first place. So of course you're gonna get the same grade that they did. It's the exact same thing. You're trying to take answers from someone that doesn't fit your business, your target audience, any of those things, and hoping that it's gonna work for you instead of investing your time and your effort and your energy into understanding the right marketing strategy for your business and your target audience, which will then make content creation and marketing so much easier, but it will create such effortless and faster sales. So number three in terms of marketing mistakes that you need to stop making literally right now is stop copying your competitor's marketing and assuming that it's gonna work for you and then getting frustrated when it doesn't. The one thing that I have always said is I would rather you literally not post at all then post with a marketing strategy that is either a, a copy of your competitors or no marketing strategy at all. I would rather you be intentional about your strategy and actually implement it because you're going to spend the time and the effort and the energy anyways than you just like lottie dying around and posting whatever you wanna post or copying it from Sally next door and then getting frustrated when you're wasting your time and your effort and your energy for no return, right? Last but not least, number four is posting daily. This is something we literally just talked about. Posting daily without a strategy or just posting about whatever you're thinking about in that moment. This is a massive mistake that I see most business owners make on the product and on the service side of things. And this is exactly what I was just talking about because a lot of times people do not understand or people confuse the difference between creating content and just posting daily and having a marketing strategy. People a lot of times think, I'm posting three TikToks a day, I'm showing up on Instagram every single day, that's my marketing strategy. No, that's your posting cadence. That's how often you're posting. Your marketing strategy is based off of marketing and sales data. It should be based off of a buyer's journey, off of a framework and off of market research. All of those things are things that you need to take into account in order to actually get people to buy from you, right? And so if all you're doing is either not posting consistently because you don't have a strategy, or if you're posting with no strategy, a lot of times if you're just posting basically, you know, in the moment when you get inspiration, you're not taking into account where your audience is at. So let's say, for example, I was just posting every single day with no strategy and I was inspired in the moment. And so that's what I was posting. If 80% of my audience is comprised of, you know, leads who don't necessarily know what our entire brand is about, they don't maybe really trust me in terms of, you know, our services yet. They don't see me as an authority in my space. They're not warm leads. Maybe they're colder leads and they've just found us. If all I'm doing is posting objection handling content and like hot takes because that's what I feel inspired to post that day, I just wasted a bunch of time and effort and energy thinking of that piece of content, creating it, posting it, because it's not going to do what my audience needs in order to actually build trust with me and eventually buy from me, right? And so if you are somebody who doesn't have a strategy or you're posting every single day just when you're feeling inspired, knock it off <laughs> because you are spending so much effort and energy to create that content and you're not gonna see a return from it because it's not what your audience needs in the moment. And how do you discover what your audience needs in the moment? It's listening to your audience, it's looking at your marketing and sales data, it's doing market research and creating content proactively and responsively that's actually going to attract more people in every single day, warm them, nurture them, build trust, and then actually convert them into sales. So we've talked about the Wolf framework before and obviously we just talked about marketing mistakes you need to stop making but in terms of what you should be doing moving forward, there is a roadmap that we talk about with our clients in terms of how you're gonna go about creating sales from your content, because that is ultimately the goal. And anyone who tells you differently, who is a marketing expert, does not understand how marketing and sales work together and is wasting your time and your money, first of all, hot take. Second of all, here's what you need to start doing in order to create content or sales from your content. First and foremost, do your market research and look at your marketing and sales data. In another episode, we're gonna talk about how to do market research, what marketing and sales data you should be looking at, et cetera. But do your market research, look at your marketing and sales data and figure out what gets your audience's attention, figure out what builds trust with them and positions you as an authority in their eyes and essentially turns them into raving fans for your business. And then what it is 
that they need to hear in order to buy from you. Like I said, there's four different buyer types and they all take different things into consideration when they are going to buy from you or when they're considering making a purchase or an investment. So figure out that piece of information. Then what I want you to do is think about your target audience and I want you to think about the problems that they're facing if they are not going to purchase your product or your service. Then what I want you to do is write down the potential problems that your target audience is experiencing before they purchase your product or invest in your service. What is it that your service or your product is a unique solution for? What problems does it solve for your target audience? And then on the flip side, I want you to think about the desires that your target audience has in relation to your product or your service and how that product or service uniquely meets that desire. Essentially, I want you to figure out how you can position your product or your service as the unique solution to your target audience's needs. We call it solution selling. And it is super important because then you don't feel salesy, you don't come off as salesy because people are a lot more apt to invest or purchase a solution rather than purchase a product or a service. So that's what I want you to do. Then I want you to take the WOLF framework, which is Attract, Warm, Convert, and I want you to customize that framework based off of all of that information. So plug in what's gonna get your target audience's attention. So then I want you to think about Okay, what is gonna grab my target audience's attention and not just grab it, but hold it and make them wanna binge your content, right? Then I want you to think through the warming phase. What is it, again, that's going to build trust with your target audience? How is it that you can talk about those problems or those desires to make your target audience feel innately seen and heard? And how can you plug your product or service as that solution to them? How do you position yourself as an authority, right? And then I want you to think about that conversion phase. So I want you to think about what your target audience needs to hear in terms of how you are positioning your product or service as a solution and customize it based off of their buyer types, right? And then I also want you to think through, and this is gonna come from market research, analyzing your marketing and sales data, any potential objections that they might have before investing in your service or purchasing your product and any potential questions that they might have. And I want you to plug all of that into your content and show up every single day on Instagram and on TikTok. Those are the two main platforms that I would recommend. However, depending on where your target audience is consuming content, you also have to take that into account, but focus on having a platform that you leverage for visibility and a platform that you leverage for warming and converting. And that's really how you can avoid making all of those mistakes and the strategy and framework that you should be customizing and using every single day in order to see sales from your content. So that is the strategy and the framework that I want you guys using. Stop making these marketing mistakes. And if you still have more questions in terms of how to customize the framework or any of those things, obviously my DMs are always open. You guys know I love geeking out with you about this stuff. So make sure that you send me a message if you have more questions about your brand or your business and how to market and sell your products or your services. And as always, make sure that you go follow me on Instagram. Make sure you follow the Running With The Wolves podcast on Instagram as well and TikTok. We have a ton of fun over there and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye guys.